As someone who literally has a Sony Alpha camera run through a capture card to film on my computer with, I'm constantly watching as the world of webcams get better and better. A few months back on this channel, I did a review of something called the OBSBOT Tiny 4K. Now, in addition to just having better image quality than something like the old tried and true C920s of the world have, that webcam also packed in a lot of really cool AI tracking features. You could hold up a hand and it would lock on you. You can move all around and it would follow you. Really, really neat webcam. Really, really cool. But today in this video, we're going to be taking a look at something else. The OBSBOT Tiny 2. This is the sequel, I reckon, to the Tiny 4K. It says in 2019, we created the world's first AI-powered PTZ webcam. And now we take a leap forward together, a new era of webcam. I scrolled the wrong direction. I apologize. Really nice video graphic here. This is the OBSBOT Tiny 2. Now, what is so different about this? Because it looks quite similar to the Tiny 4K. Well, the biggest thing here is that they've increased the sensor size quite a bit. It's now a 1 over 1.5 inch sensor, which should really improve low light performance. They've also done some cool stuff like giving you a controller because currently you have to use an app to kind of turn the camera. It actually is motorized. Like I said, it can track you, but you can kind of motorize, move it around, put it where you want it. Now there's actually a remote, which I cannot wait to see. So at this point, let's jump into the unboxing and then we'll put this thing to the test and compare it to the old Tiny 4K as well. All right, so here is the OBSBOT Tiny 2. And like I said, the remote control, which I'm very, very excited about. I think that's gonna solve a lot of my complaints with the Tiny 4K. What is in the box here? You got the camera, an adjustable mount, USB-C cable, an A to C adapter, a case, a manual, pretty similar to before, but hopefully improved. Looks like we open from the bottom a new era of web camera and this looks like our instructions. I love that they send this stuff in this nice little carrying case. That is such a nice touch, such a nice added value. And it's honestly a pretty solid feeling little case. So here's that USB-C to C cable. This is the mounting stand, which I think has changed the design a little bit. This is pretty cool. So this will sit basically on your monitor and kind of grip against it, and then it's magnetic. So you can actually angle the camera from there, in addition to the fact that it's motorized and can look all around. This is the webcam itself. And you can see how it's basically got its own gimbal. It can turn all around, almost, I guess, pretty close to a full 360, and then, of course, look up and down as well. Let's take this little peel off there. That is pretty solid looking. Very, very well built. There's also some pogo connectors down there. I wonder what that's for. Like I said, magnetic connection there, and that is a pretty solid magnetic connection. Pretty good. As far as the remote goes, I actually quite like the appearance of this. It's kind of a sleek look. So this should allow you to change your zoom level, also aim the thing around. I believe these are for like presets you can have programmed in. You can turn off tracking, close up, hand, lots of really cool stuff we're gonna have to try on this controller. Are batteries included? It feels like no, and the answer is in fact no. And there's a USB dongle in there. That's pretty interesting. So is this IR or dongle or both? I need batteries. So I have installed the camera, got it plugged in, sitting on top of its little mounting thing. You can see me here in my own camera. Now it's time to actually see what it actually looks like in action. I said actually too many times. Okay, so this is still my Sony Alpha 6100 ran through an Elgato 4K, the cam link or whatever it's called. So this looks quite good to me and it should, this camera's well over $700. So now let's go into my settings and let's change this to the OBSBOT Tiny 2 and see what this looks like. So first off, we're pretty blown out. So let's take a second here and let's get this thing dialed in. The first things first, we are installing the OBSBOT camera software, which you can find via the link in the description. I've also turned on the tracking already by just simply holding up a hand, which I won't do again. And you can see while I'm doing this, it is doing a pretty good job of keeping me framed in the shot. I do think the color temperature out of the box is very, very saturated and very, very warm. So let's go ahead and open up that software and let's see if we can do anything about this overly saturated, over warm picture. So let's go into image here. Exposure being automatic, that's probably fine. That should not be causing the problem. Anti-flicker shouldn't be causing either. Now the white balance, I think that was a lot of it. I think that's pretty close now to being correct, although the saturation is probably still 
too high. So let's see if we can drop this down to like 40. Okay, we're looking pretty good at that point. That's pretty close to what it looks like on my regular webcam. So let's go back full screen again. And what do we think about this image quality? Honestly, that looks pretty darn sharp to me. One of my biggest problems with the tiny 4K where there were times when my face would just be slightly out of focus. Everything else looks pretty tack sharp, but I was just slightly blurry at times. And I think that appears to be totally resolved on this webcam. All right, so let's take some time now and just really dig into the controls that we have here. Let's see if we can kind of get this thing slightly better centered, looking pretty good there. Of course, I could also hold up a hand and I get the flashing light and now it's going to try once again to track me. And it's actually fast. I think this is faster than it was before. Once you get to a spot where you feel like it looks pretty good, you can always hold up a hand and it has now blinked again. And you can also see that the tracking thing is changing off and on. So let's turn normal tracking back on actually. And let's go to upper body. What is that gonna do? So it looks like that's pretty similar. What about close up? I'm not seeing a difference there. Headless. Okay, so we've just zoomed into my chest for some reason. And then lower body, I'm assuming it's going to try and look for as much of a lower body as it can. This is a very strange video that we're currently making. Upper body, it's going to come, you would assume, back up to my upper body. Yeah, there we go. So there's all sorts of different things like that that you can do. I'm not really sure what close-up was meant to do because it really didn't do much. Let's go to normal tracking and then motion. Is this just going to make it even faster, perhaps? Yes, that does seem like it's responding a bit more quickly. Of course, you could also be, you know, maybe you're a creator that you move around a little bit. So let's get up, move my microphone so that it can kind of hear me a bit. You can see here, it's going to track me around the room very, very well. So if you're doing something like that where you're moving around and you want something to track you like this thing currently is, you don't have a cameraman to follow you around, this thing can be your cameraman and it can follow you around. Okay, so we've now got some batteries in the controller. We've turned the controller on up here, and that means I should be able to use this thing to, yes, to dial this thing in, to move it around and put the camera exactly where I want it. That's gonna be a lot easier to use than trying to use this thing here, which was a big pain to use on the Tiny 4K. This should be a big improvement. We should also be able to zoom in and out a bit as well. How far can this thing actually zoom in? That is a really long ways to be zooming in and zooming out. That's actually pretty solid. So under the tab for beauty, there are actually some fairly interesting options here. So you have to first turn this on by enabling this option on screen. And then in OBS, whatever it might be, instead of using the option that just says tiny 4K, you wanna use the option that says, let me drag this where it's visible on the screen here, OBSBOT virtual camera. Switch to that one. And then there are some cool features like background blur okay is that the best background blur in the world no but it's automatic and it's built in let's drop it down to like 10 is that a believable amount of background blur not really five almost you could almost believe that this was just like a really good camera that has natural bokeh but there are some other options here so there is a retouching ability so let's see what it looks like if i go through these let's start in the obvious place men it definitely did some stuff to me, right? Oh yeah, it slimmed, it slimmed my face a bit. What about classic? Oh, well, hello there. I'm beautiful. What about native? I don't know what that means. So there's definitely some like retouching stuff. And then things get <laughs> pretty interesting. You can really go in and filter your body shape with this. So for these next things, I was trying them, but my shirt's black and I think it was just throwing it off. So I have, uh, what would you say? I've volunteered my wife here. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna aim up at her and we're gonna try and go through some of these and she'll demonstrate these things. So the first one is body slim. The body slim one, I can't tell that it's doing anything. I can't see. Let me get totally, oh, there it did. There it did. When I was out I can't of, see it. when I was out of the frame, it totally did. Quite a bit. It's doing a lot. Let's go to leggy. What does leggy mean? Can you tell me? Oh, yeah, 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 whoa. yeah. Whoa. <laughs> oh, whoa. It's It warped the whole room to make your legs look longer. This is ridiculous. What about... Where are you going? I'm trying to back up so you can see it better. Try to step, do it again. step to your left. Do it again. Yeah, I mean, it's literally making your legs look longer. Legs... That's making your legs look slimmer. <laughs> Waist. 
Definitely pulling your waist in. Shoulders, yep. And then my personal favorite is the head shrinking option. <laughs> Don't know why they want that, but I guess in this culture where, you know, wherever this stuff was primed for, they want you to have a nice small head. There are also these filters, which... Okay, those are pretty cool, though. These are just like Instagram filters for the webcam. So yeah. that's cool. So under the more tab, there's a few more interesting things like an auto sleep timer. You can actually customize the background. It's going to show when it's asleep. So that is pretty cool. You can also tweak some things about the gesture control. So you can turn off that auto recognition of the hand turning on the tracking and so forth and so on. There's also zoom. So you can do this to zoom in. There we go. And then you're supposed to be able to do this to zoom in, zoom out. That is actually really cool. So let's do this. And we've now zoomed back out. So there's some really interesting stuff there, but if you don't want to have that turned on, you can absolutely turn that stuff off. Now there are some other things though, like voice control. Maybe you don't want to use those controls. Maybe you want to use something else. So let's try this. Hi, Tiny. Track me. That worked pretty well. Can I tell it to stop tracking me? Hi, Tiny. Unlock me. Okay, so unlock me is the phrase for not tracking. That's a little bit of an odd phrase, but that's evidently what they want you to use. You can see the list of things here and all the voice commands. That's pretty cool. So I've actually now moved to the area that my wife records in because she is using the Tiny 4K. So this is what last the last version of this webcam basically looked like, the Tiny 4K. So now we're going to uh, unplug it and plug this one in and see how much better this is going to look. I do also want you guys to see how much smaller the new one is. This is the new one, and it is absolutely diminutive compared to the Tiny 4K, while also having a larger sensor and better image quality. Very, very impressive. And this is the new Tiny 2, and I can already tell this looks a ton better. I actually just realized I didn't turn her light on in here. So this is basically a low light test. Here's what the light on obviously looks a lot better, but you saw the Tiny 4K in the same exact low light scenario. You saw what it looked like. This is how much better the Tiny 2 looks. This is, for my money, a pretty substantial improvement in overall quality. And in case you were wondering about how it would work as its own microphone rather than using something like the mics that we use, that's what you're hearing right now. This is the microphone from the Obsbot Tiny 2. And I don't know how it's gonna sound, we'll find out. Guys, overall, I'm impressed. I was pretty impressed with the Tiny 4K, and this thing is improving on pretty much everything that the Tiny 4K did. The picture quality is better. It's moving around and responding faster. This controller is an absolute must-have slam dunk accessory for this thing. If you're buying the camera, you got to buy this thing as well. It's fantastic. You've got your presets here, which I didn't really touch on, but you can basically set little presets with certain levels of zoom, certain positions, so forth and so on, and call them up on the this control. You can also just use it to change modes and to zoom in, move the thing around. It's really, really good. Now, the important thing here, what does it cost? Well, we're looking at $329 for the camera itself, which is not a cheap webcam. However, when you look at the image quality that we're getting here and you compare it to things that are better in terms of image quality, typically what you're talking about then is what I do, which is having a proper camera with a capture card. And you're gonna be spending closer to $1,000 to do that. My Sony Alpha camera is $700 now. That Cam 4K I think is over 100. You're gonna spend way more. So it sounds expensive, but again, you gotta then think about what you're comparing it to. And those things are also going to be even more expensive than that. So as you can see here, it's available for purchase on June the 27th, which should be today. That should be the day that I am posting this for you to see it. Of course, I'm going to drop a link in the description to both this webcam and to the controller. Assume that those links are affiliate links, which means if this seems like something that is going to be useful to you and you purchase it with those links, I'll get commission. It'll help support the channel. Big shout out to Obsbot for sending this thing over for me to review. As always, no money has changed hands for this review and they will be seeing it at the exact same time as you are. I honestly just don't have a ton of complaints with this thing. 
It's small. It's versatile. It can be a desk camera if you want it to do that. There's a carrying case that comes with it. The controller is awesome. It's just a really solid webcam as far as I can tell, guys. If you want to see more content just like this, subscribe before you go. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.